Well, back here it finished, as you know, uh, one all, and we've got uh, the Irish manager, Steve Staunton, now. He's talking to Tony O'Donoghue. It's coming up. All right, OK. Uh, be interesting to hear what he says, actually. He, he has to be disappointed himself, obviously. Well, yeah, it's, it's an ordeal for, for Steve Staunton uh, at the moment. And, uh, you know, it's... He shouldn't be in this situation. He should never have been in the situation. He wasn't qualified to take the job. But now we're seeing the consequences, and the consequences are, are felt in the, really by the players and by the supporters mm. of the team. The supporters spending their, their hard-earned money, the players who are on a career path. They deserve to play. But, but can I ask a question that always intrigues me? I'll give you an example of the spin. Yeah. Last week, Steve Staunton said there was a danger that players would stop turning up to play for Ireland if they were getting criticised in the media. In other words, anyone being critical is endangering the players coming here. Yeah. Now, the, nobody in the media is really hammering the players. The people that have been criticised are John Delaney, who's responsible for the appointment, and Steve Staunton himself. Mm -hmm. And the questions are legitimate. But they are spinning like mad. I'd be very interested to see what he has to say, but I don't like to see a good football man in this situation. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, let's hear what he has to say. He's talking to Tony O'Donoghue. I'm sorry, we have some technical problems. We will sort them out, but we can't sort them out at this particular point in time. The thing that, that I find very hard to imagine, I think, I think Delaney has done a magnificent job as chief executive in promoting the game at various different levels. I think structurally the FAI is in a better condition than it ever was. I think that things are being put in place that were never there before. He's done a wonderful job. Why doesn't he admit against that background, that this was a mistake. Well, so I think it could come to that, Bill. I think what they, what they said was that they'll wait until the end of this campaign, which is one match. I mean, we, we were advocated that Steve Stanton go earlier because it gives the new manager a chance to come in. But it's one more match to go now, and I think they will reflect on that. And I would be surprised if there isn't a change at that particular stage. We have, we have uh, Steve Stanton now, so let's watch it. Very poor performance. Um, very disappointing. And I can understand from the fans' point of view, it's not good enough, and it's not good enough from the players or the management team. How much responsibility do you take yourself for that? Well, you know, that's my job. But once the players go out over the white line, they have to stand up and be counted. They've done it on Saturday. didn't happen tonight. And, you know, we're all uh, disappointed with the performance. Never mind anything else. We've been very lucky to get out of jail tonight. It was shocking, in fact, to hear an Irish crowd boo an Irish team here at Croke Park. Well, they were within their rights. Uh, it wasn't good enough, as I said. You know, no excuses. First half, we never got the grips with it. Second half, a little bit better, but a long way off the standards. Obviously, with Andy Reid being injured in the build-up to this game, you never really had a chance for that 11 to practice together, did you? Well, no, but that was the same before Saturday, so there's no excuses now. And... Uh, there's nothing you can do. Um, I can't pass the ball for them. But, you know, we have to show a lot more desire than that. With players like Joey O'Brien, it clearly didn't work in, in midfield you to change him at half time. It was a big ask for the young man. Yeah, like Saturday, it was a big ask, but he coped very well. But, uh, you know, he's a lot better on the ball than he showed tonight. But it didn't work. We were still nil nil. And second half, as I said, Liam came in, done well. But, you know, we need an awful lot more. Cyprus home and away, San Marino performance, the result in Slovakia, whatever about the performance. These are landmarks along the road. Does it make you question your own ability? No, not whatsoever. Uh, I'll get on with my job and I'll see it through. I know what I've come here to do and I've seen the young players coming through. We have to try and get a settled squad now for the World Cup. If we do that, we can get a settled team. And... Uh, then get players pushing, pushing other players for places. I think that's very sad to listen to. It is really, isn't it? It's yeah. a touch surreal, but um, he's obviously he obviously has no intention of resigning. Well, I don't blame him. Why should he resign? 
Uh, I think you, I think you should consider your position when it becomes oh, as bad as the night lame. Well, why should he resign the FAI? Well, no, I give him a contract for four years. Yeah, if the FAI yeah. want to get rid of him, they get rid of him and pay the man off. The man yeah. deserves paying off. He, as Amy yeah. said, he shouldn't have been put in this position in the first place. Mm. I remember. I don't think it's a question of payoff. I mean, I think the the I think it, I I find it. Well, it is if you resign, John. I'm no, sorry. It, it is if you resign. It's sad, it is sad, isn't it? He I, was I such a great it, player. He's you know, been a great player, and he's up against it. He's, he's, he's had a dreadful time. He's having a dreadful time. Uh, and uh, But at the same time, Liam, I wouldn't rule out that if he feels that he hasn't done the job, you know, when he reflects on the situation tomorrow or next week, to say, look, I haven't done the job. Yeah, well, it depends on, on the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah. isn't he saying, though, that he, the management has to be blamed as well as the players? But then he, at the same time, He's making, there's no question about his own ability and there is no question of uh, not doing what he was um, required well, he to do. To say that. I think he has to say that. Yeah. He has to say that, Bill. You're not going to go on and say, look, I'm sorry, everybody in Ireland, I got it wrong. Yeah, but if you let John Toshek know after the match in Cyprus, <coughs> he made the point that uh, he it, had to question what, what if he was doing things wrongly when no, they were playing. He blamed the well. He was, well, he the players no, he was as well. outrageous. But he was more forthright about himself. Uh, no, only after blaming the players, Bill. He put blame the players first. John, I think John Tashi's behaviour was dreadful over the weekend. At least Steve Stanton has done it with, with a bit of dignity there tonight, you know. And as Liam said, if you ask the manager right here, he's not going to say, well, look, I did a dreadful job. He could have said, well, I made a few mistakes along the way. But it, it is difficult, I think, particularly after a match like this, where he's had a you know, dreadful, dreadful performance. And of course he, he has to accept responsibility, but it's a difficult time for him to... to, to do it. Said, Steve's had too little experience, Tasha's had too many. He's managed 100 clubs, but <laughs> you know, he, 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 he's just better at the spinning. But this is, a, this is a crisis for Irish football. I'll tell you why. If you take people like Richard Dunn and Shea Given, take two of them, Steve Finnan in his 30s, these guys d deserve the best shot they, they can to play in a major championship final. The fans out there deserve to follow their team uh, to 2008, 2010 in South Africa. There's something really serious at stake here. And all the, all the fooling around and the lying and the spinning and, and all of that stuff has to stop at some stage. Now, the, as things stand tonight, John Delaney's credibility is shot to bits. They have no credibility. In terms of disappointment only. In terms of disappointment. But this is what is at the core. It's the dynamic that drives the whole game in this country. It's the highest aspiration of every young kid in the country to play for their country. People don't come from Galway and Cork and Monaghan all over the place to fill this magnificent stadium, Bill. That's what they come. This is at the core of everything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, responsibility has to be accepted and a decision has to be made yeah. in the best interest of Irish soccer, not any individual. OK, OK, we also have to acknowledge, of course, <coughs> tonight, the performance of the Cypriots, and let's celebrate their performance by looking at their goal. Yeah, well, which which may show well, a lot of mistakes. Be, I mean, if you were a Cypriot tonight, Billy, you'd be a proud man. Uh, the manager must be well pleased. They went out, they played with, with uh, uh, plenty of skill, plenty of confidence. This is the goal coming up, which is an excellent goal from their point of view. Obviously, you can always look from a defensive point of view, which we were very, very poor on. I mean, that's a free header inside the six-yard line. I think it was Paul McShane lost his man in, in, in the, in the, when the ball went out uh, wide. And look, he's got it. That's an absolute clear header. Doesn't it demonstrate how important Richard Dunn is, though? Yes. Well, he might have made a big difference there tonight, all right, but he, he, even Richard Dunn, Bill, on yeah. tonight's performance, uh, I don't think would have stopped what actually okay, let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at Finnan's goal. Um, he took that well, didn't he? He did. He went close a little bit earlier on. He had it blocked. It was sustained Irish pressure. Uh, little chip in from McGeddy. The Cypriots can't get it clear too far, and Finnan slams it in. It was interesting, I thought, watching him going back to the centre. So he wasn't really celebrating. Well, you're not going to be celebrating a, a, an equaliser in injury time against Cyprus, Bill. <laughs> Come on now, no, that's not. I think it, it, it does save a bit of embarrassment. It keeps us above Cyprus in the, in the, in the table, but. Um, that would have been, I felt a bit sorry for the Cypriots because that probably would have been their greatest result of all oh, yeah. time. In all probability, in all probability, yeah, okay. Um, they had a, they, they could have had, <coughs> they had five clear chances, they took yeah. one. Let's look at one other one as well, Ocas chance. Yeah, Ocas, he plays uh, for Caldevigo in Spain and he really, really should have scored. He scored 21 goals for Cyprus and this is very close. Clips the outside of the post. Che Given did really well, but he got yeah. the wrong side of McShane. Uh, and it was, a very, it was the most clear-cut chance in the match, in fact. Uh, and they, that was a, their fourth chance in the match. They took their fifth uh, chance.